Hey, help me ducks, it's Simon. Welcome back to the Hermit's Cave. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Dream Keepers Tarot. So this was part of the incredible package that I received yesterday um, from my friend in Texas, Anton, who sent quite a few things. And some of the comments that I've had overnight are people saying, please do walkthroughs of the deck. So obviously um i already have a walkthrough out of the fairy tale tarot but um some point over the weekend probably tomorrow i will also do a walkthrough of the the dead weight but for now for today we're going to be looking at the dream keepers tarot so this was tied up with ribbon and everything so i think it was you know a, a set that came together i know you can buy um, the deck separate from the book um, because I believe it comes with like a little fold out anyway and um, there's a couple of extra things this got a little bit bashed sadly but this is kind of like the um, the thank you card telling you about Liz Houston Houston sorry's um, Dreamkeepers Tarot it is signed you can see the uh, the ink there so and it just says dear friend thank you for supporting the Dreamkeepers Tarot made these cards Bring you insight, solace, comfort, guidance, and reassurance in times of struggle or uncertainty, as well as moments of joy. So, yeah, Liz Houston, from, from what I can find out about her, um, she is an artist who has her own gallery shop in California. Um, and this, this deck took her 10 years to create from 2008 to 2018 and it wasn't her first deck she she almost completed a tarot deck a digital art type tarot deck and there was a computer crash and she lost everything and she was so close to completing so she mourned that for a while and then began to create the dream keepers tarot which as i said took um 10 years um this came with a little art card slash postcard it says of stars and sea and on the back again it's signed thank you and it's signed by her with this little heart which is which is really sweet um this is the book now I've seen other versions. I've seen a hardback version. I've seen colour versions. This is the 2018 uh, book, which is really nice. So I think this is what was released with the Kickstarter campaign. Again, signed by Liz. Um, I love that. To my sisters, not of blood, but of spirit and soul. And it's to sisters. Now, this is a very female centric, purposely so. It was to honour, um, you know, the feminine, the sacred feminine, Gaia. Um, and I'm I'm down with that. I think that's great. Lots of acknowledgements here and here. And I just scanned through and I saw like Holly's name from Cape Cod Creature. So I'm imagining this is everybody who backed the uh, Kickstarter project. And then... This is the preface at the beginning of the book, saying that she's had a strong relationship with Tarot of 25 years. This is where I read about it taking 10 years, September 30th, 2008. And she completed with the Emperor card on the 29th of September, 2018. So exactly a year, 30th, 29th, wow. So that was really cool. And then here it talks about um, a little bit of about the dream keepers tarot and this is very ethereal very dreamlike obviously with the title um but it says here ever since we have possessed the cognitive abilities to understand the universe and take our place in it humanity has looked to the occult the heavens and to signs and symbols in order to comprehend predict and come to terms with the mysterious forces which influence our lives Tarot is one 
uh, sorry, tarot is but one method to do this. And in my opinion, a highly effective one. I agree. It brings knowledge, often hidden in plain sight, into clear, conscious focus through its symbolic language and offers insights while giving us the tools to interpret and apply them. Yes, absolutely. And and she goes on to say that, um, you know, whilst it's used to predict, it's used for other ways as well. And I love that about giving um, what can be often hidden uh, in plain sight into clear conscious focus, because that's what the tarot does for me. You know, it reveals, I talk about it being a mirror, uh, what's going on internally. Um, in the artwork I created for the Dream Keepers Tarot, you will notice an abundance of the female form. This is deliberate on my part, and that was the me reasons why I mentioned. Um, so, yeah. So then we get some spreads. And then we go into the major arcana with the four. And I really like this. So in the bold italics, you get like a, like a phrase, keywords. So the fall here, the playful spirit in search of experience. Then you get a write-up about the depiction in the card. And yeah, at the bottom as well of each... Where was I looking earlier? Let's find... Um, we go here so we have different titles in some cards i think the magician is renamed as well from what i recall uh the creator the creatrix and the fates for the wheel uh hanged woman um yeah so i like the the last paragraph, because it will say, when the death card appears in this reading, um, when the hanged woman appears in your reading. So it gives you, um, it gives you real context by breaking it down, you know, keywords, a phrase, a little bit about the card, and then when it appears in a reading. So, yeah, nice book. You get quite a bit of information from the miners as well. So, you know, they're all treated equally. And then there's the little bit about Liz Houston as well, a native of Los Angeles, California. Yeah, so that's the book. So let's have a look at the cards. Um, let me see if I can get some scissors. And in we go. Oh, the box feels really nice. It's a tote box, but it's got a nice linen feel to it. I really like that. That feels lovely. I like it when it goes down at the back as well, so you can just pull them out really nice. Cardstock is, look, this feels a deck that I got recently. Lonely Dreamer, Lonely Dreamer Tarot. Um, same, same cardstock as that. It's linen. It's not the thickest, but it feels durable. Um, yeah, really nice. These are the backs. And this is a really nice sort of Victorian, almost like lace, like black lace um, design. And here we have this, these two faces, these two female faces facing each other, which of course then makes the deck not, uh, you know, reversible looking at the backs. However, you know, some people read reversals, others like me don't. Wow. So, oh, the artwork looks amazing. So if you don't get the book, um, this is the key to uh, Liz Houston's Dream Keepers Tarot. And it is a very handy, quick reference guide. So um, I wonder if those little references there are what's in the bold font. Um, well, that's the aces, so it must be this side. Yes, 
So what you get basically is for the fall, a playful spirit in search of experience. The playful spirit in search of, ex in search of experience. So the black italic type font there is what you get in this. But obviously if you buy the book, you get the other information. So this bold font here is what you get in the in the little pullout, which is really handy. Okay, just pop that back in the box. And let's have a look at the card. So I think I will zoom in. We'll have some lovely music and then I'll talk about some of the cards at the end. Just before I do um, the walkthrough though, I do want to do a size comparison. So this is an exact US Games kind of standard card size tarot. Okay, let's let's have a look.
Okay, so what I pulled out quite a few cards here that um, just rarely jump out to me, but I've got to be honest, this deck is so beautiful. Every card is a work of stunning beauty. It has that real sort of classical art style. It's just, which is timeless, isn't it? But it's just beautiful. But I just, sometimes you, you walk, through, walk through a deck and certain cards just jump and speak to you. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, these cards. I love this fall. I love that it's a moon in the fall card. And she's just, you know, stood on this kind of, um, looks like a top hat and just precariously balancing there. Oh, just really beautiful. And it's very dreamlike. And obviously, this is the dream keepers, but look at that. Just the Empress. Really, or really at nature. Look at the clothes with the clouds and the sky and the flowers. Really beautiful. Love the lovers. I mean, this is the famous image because it's off the book and the box, but I love this as well. And you've got like the the triple moon here, the maiden mother crone, really beautiful. And the birds, stunning. The chariot is a stunning card, really amazing. Look how she's holding different faces as well. And the horses look, how they're kind of pushing their heads together. It's really sweet. Strength card, I just thought, beautiful this serpent snake entwined around her the hermit look at the reflection in the sky what's within is also without really beautiful love the duality here in the justice card it's two two in one his forearms the red the contrast of the red and the white is beautiful and justice being blind death love this death card you see the skull and the human face again like the strength you know entwined by this serpent but this is kind of like a cocoon like the metamorphosis of death you know becoming something else the devil card i just thought was such a classical beautiful image Reminded me of something out of like Victorian romantic or something like that. Really beautiful. Same with the moon. Love the image there. The sun really embracing the energy of the sun. Gorgeous judgment card. Got these skulls and skeletal bones and Wow, such a contrast. I like this Ace of Wands. You know, she's kind of like in this apothecary um, and she's, you know, making this concoction. She's beginning the process of something. But I love that this is kind of in a, a keyhole. You know, with this being the Ace, you know, it's kind of the start of something. And you can imagine, you know, turning the lock of the key and going into, into this world. Beautiful. What can I say about the Three of Wands here? I love the Three of Wands. Looking out to water, the little ship, the birds, but it is such a thing of beauty. Four, I love these kind of tree people. These very ground, look at all the roots for the legs. Beautiful. This kind of made me chuckle. You've got this cat that's cowering behind from the bird. <laughs> you know, she's kind of where you can see her nose and chin. It's almost like a she's wearing a bird's head mask type thing, but, you know, turning it on its head. The swift action of the eight of wands. I love this. And she's got these beautiful butterfly wings and there's somebody here with her, like a crow's mask and really gorgeous love this image two of cups what a perfect two of cups just beautiful same with the three i love that you know being so joyous together they're being elevated up love the dreamy sequence here this 
swan, but also a cloud floating in the sky. Beautiful. Knight of Cups, stunning. One of my favourite images. I just think it is so beautiful. I love the gnarly bare branches of the trees, the moon in the background. It's beautiful. I love that King of Cups. And uh, interestingly, in this deck, the way it was ordered was the King came before the Queen. And I think, again, that's deliberate. But I think they just complement each other so beautifully. Ace of Swords, I loved. Three, this is kind of almost reminds me. And we think of the, sorry, the four, we think of the four of almost like, you know, rest. Look at the cat there in the tree and the bird. There's so much detail. But this is almost like a Ophelia type image. Six of Pentacles I thought was beautiful, that discernment. I love the Nine of Pentacles anyway, but look at this. Look how happy she is with her, arm, uh, her outstretched arms, the beautiful bird, the garden that we're used to seeing in the RWS. And the Queen of Pentacles is just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The rabbits and floral gown, everything about it. This is like as beautiful as within the um, Pagan Otherworlds tarot. Really gorgeous. So there you have it. That's the Dreamkeeper's Tarot, a deck that I've wanted for about 18 months, never hit the buy button and then, you know, received it as a gift, which I'm, I'm really grateful for. So thank you again, Anton. Um, I like the way that the titles are all at the bottom as well. Roman numerals all the way through, even on the minors. So, yeah. Okay. So, I'll be back today at 4 p.m. for my interview with Joe from Joe the Tarot Guy. I hope you'll be able to join me then. And until then, go in peace. Namaste. And blessed be. Yeah.